Welcome back, Rec Watchers. In our last video, we explored the Saganaga, the first of the four Bell Island wrecks. Today, we're not only going underwater, we're going underground. In our last video, we told the story of the SS Saganaga, the first of four ships torpedoed by German subs in 1942. And we were introduced to the Bell Island Museum, which tells the story of these wrecks and even has some amazing items from U-boat U-513, donated by the daughter of its captain, Rolf Rugerberg. Today, we're diving on the second ship, the SS Lord Strathcona who witnessed the destruction of the Saganaga before coming face to face with U-513. After they sank the uh, Saganaga, they were maneuver in position to sink the Lord Strathcona. Of course, there was an inexperienced crew on board. They didn't account for the loss of buoyancy. So she uncontrollably started going to the surface and they went underneath the Lord Strathcona and struck the conning tower and surfaced but there was nobody on board the Lord Strathcona because the crew, the captain, seen the Saganaga blow up in front of them and the captain ordered abandoned ship because they knew they were getting it next. So all these ships were manned by merchant marines at the time and there was anti-submarine guns on board, but there was nobody on board the Lord Strathcona to sink that sub when she came to the surface. Amazingly, photos taken by the crew of U-513 show the damage the sub's conning tower sustained after running right into the Lord Strathcona. Today's mission is to find and film the gun that never fired, leaving the empty Lord Strathcona with no hope as she sat and waited for U-513 to send her to the depths of Conception Bay. But first, Rick has prepared a special surprise for us on Bell Island. So Rick, this morning we got up and you said you had a special treat for us, taking us over to Bell Island. What is, what is Bell Island? Where are we going and what are we on well, right Bell now? Bell Island is the jewel of Conception Bay. If you look at this here, Conception Bay, it's like one necklace. Okay. And that, right? Okay. And so this is the biggest island in the middle of Conception Bay. Bell Island had 13,000 people working there in the mine in its day. Wow. And we're going over to Bell Island, 20 minute ferry ride, and they're going to host us today. They're, oh. they're closed for the season. This is off season for them, but they're going to open up. They're going to give us a tour guide. So we're going to get a real good sense of place yeah. and what those miners endured while they were working there and also after it all shut down. Right. So uh, it'll be heartfelt, I promise you. During World War II, the Bell Island Mine was one of five strategically important sites on the island that were feared to be targets of the Germans. Germany was one of their largest customers until 1939, when the mine refused to sell their ore after Hitler invaded Poland, making the Bell Island Mine a target on the Nazi hit list. Okay, so guys, this is the original entrance to number two mine. And this mine started in 1902, so it's 121 years old. I'm going to be telling you guys lots of stories about these mines. And those stories come from both my grandfathers who worked down here. Now, I grew up on Belle Island, living just a few minutes away from both my grandparents. And of course, you're hearing these mining stories every day, hey, as you grow up. So when I got older, I started writing down some of them. And about three months ago, I had a book published, and it's called My Happy Place. And since this show is going to be on YouTube, I'd like to say my happy place is available at Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, there will be a link in the description of below. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So guys, please watch your step, and let's take a trip back in time. See, the parking lot is just above our heads here. Yeah. So there's only a couple of feet of ground over your head. Yeah. Right now, we can start walking through these tunnels and we can keep walking through there for about the next two hours. And it's all mined out. And that's how big these mines are. 70 square miles, almost three times bigger than Bell Island. 
because the majority of the mines are not underneath Bell Island, they're underneath the ocean floor. So we have 17 feet of iron ore sandwiched between two levels of bedrock. So the men used to drill into it, they'd put in their dynamite sticks and blast it out. They shovel it into the ore car and it got pulled to the surface by one inch cable. It was loaded onto ore ships and taken to places like the US, England, Nova Scotia. All these places were buying our iron ore. Probably the most important thing to remember about this tour are these lights. We only put these lights here about 25 years ago when we started doing the tour. Now, would you guys mind if I shut out the lights for a few minutes to show you how dark it is? Would that be okay? So guys, this is how the men worked, 10 hours a day, six days a week. And my grandfather used to talk about it. He said, when you work underground in the dark, the winters are the worst. My grandfather told me when he worked down here, all he had was this wet, slippery floor, two steel railway tracks inside of a tunnel that was lit up with candles. So just think about it, a dark tunnel, a slippery floor, and hundreds of ore cars going up and down all day long. That's what made the main slope so dangerous. In the bottom of these mines, there's a giant freshwater lake and it's been building up since 1966. So as you can see guys, the water out here is touching the ceiling. So we know the water is 17 feet deep. Now don't forget, we've only walked 650 feet. This goes down for another three miles. So for the next three miles, it's all underneath 17 feet of fresh water. With much of the mines flooded today, this has created a very unique opportunity for those divers with the right training and certification who would like to explore these submerged mine shafts. This is where we come after we get our twin set or our rebreather, our side mount, all rigged up, we walk out here and then we just walk down those steps. The situational awareness of diving a mine in comparison to diving a cave down in Florida is almost like doing wreck penetration because you got all these dangling bits and so on that you got to be very aware of. And there's all kinds of old artifacts that when they shut down this mine, you know, they shut off the dewatering pumps and, uh, you know, start filling them up and people didn't have a chance to get some of their personal artifacts, whether it be a lunchbox or a shovel or whatever the case may be out, you know, old bottles and, and whatnot. And so Jill Heiner uh, tagged it perfectly. It's uh, industrial archeology. span In 71 years, the men took out and sold 82 million tons of iron ore. Now that's a big number, but we still have two and a half billion tons left down here. That's enough iron ore to supply the entire world market for the next 120 years. And that's our story. After touring the mine, we then set out to dive on the Lord Strathcona to see the anti-sub gun that never fired. When we get down the line here, we'll be coming down the line on the stern. Uh, it will be about 70, 65, 70 feet to the deck there. Um, we'll be exploring the stern gun. Uh, it goes all the way down to about 120 feet on the bottom, but we're not going there today. The SS Lord Strathcona, built in 1915, was a Canadian-owned 7,300-ton steamer that was used during World War II to transport iron ore from the Bell Island mines. Since 
sitting at anchor just a half kilometer from the Saganaga when she was struck by two torpedoes from U-513. The third officer realized they were sitting ducks and ordered the crew to abandon ship. The quick thinking of the third officer saved the crew. However, the abandoned ship had no gunners to fire on the U-boat. We made our way aft, passing the new sea life, adorning the wreckage, and over the gaping holes from the torpedoes, until we reached the stern anti-submarine gun. Wreck. That was a beautiful, beautiful shipwreck. That gun. Isn't that uh, incredible? That was amazing. All the brass components. Oh I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Looking in those those rooms underneath yeah. the the porthole. Yeah, it's just yeah, really really nice. Rick, we're gonna run down the fire. Like that? Fantastic. Yeah, it was a great time. Oh yeah. That's the Lord Strathcona. That's Lord the Strathcona. Yeah. Beautiful enemies all over that too. Oh yeah. But that gun, what always blows me away is all the brass still yeah. shining through on the back there. Yeah. And you can oh. see the old stand, like where they would oh. stand on it. And, like it's incredible. Yeah. It's just so well defined that gun. Yeah. And the enemies, when you were going around that, uh, the steam pipe there. Yeah. yeah. It was, oh, it was super cool. Thanks so much for watching our diving adventure on the Lord Strathcona. And special thanks to Newfoundland and Labrador Tourism and Ocean Quest Adventures for making this possible. Be sure to check out their links in the description below. And special thanks to Brian Hickey and the Bell Island Mine Tour and Museum for opening just for us for an amazing experience. Look for Brian's book, My Happy Place on Amazon. If you haven't subscribed to RecWatch yet, then click subscribe and hit that notifications bell to be sure to see our next video on the Rose Castle and the PLM 27 wrecks in this series on Bell Island, Newfoundland. We'd love to hear from you. Are you enjoying this type of video? Would you like to see more? Are there shipwrecks that you would like to know more about? If so, please leave a comment and let us know what you would like to see. Thanks again for watching. Remember, deep down, we care.